every aspect of our lives will be touched by climate change. Climate is not something that's happening elsewhere. It's not happening to other people, even if it may be hitting other populations more um, intensely than it's hitting the one that you're in. It will touch every life and transform every aspect of that life down to the decisions we make with our children and family, where we live, what kinds of jobs are available, how much economic growth we can come to expect. It's a totalizing, all-encompassing system, and everything we do over the next century will be conducted in the theater of climate change. We had been taught to expect that climate change was very, very slow, that it was something that would be unfolding on a time scale of decades. And so we could imagine, while it might be a problem for our grandchildren and their grandchildren, that we had a lot of time to address the issue. We had a lot of time to grow our way out of the issue and invent technological solutions to the problem. In fact, more than half of all of the fossil fuel emissions that we've put into the atmosphere in all of human history have been produced in the last 25 years which means that we've now done more damage to the climate since Al Gore wrote his first book on global warming, since the UN established the IPCC, and in all the millennia before. This is not an old phenomenon. We're not dealing with the legacy of the Industrial Revolution. We're dealing with the damage that we're doing every day in real time. And we're seeing that damage on our TV screens finally in the last few years with coverage of extreme weather, natural disasters. But people haven't really begun to appreciate just how much more will be coming, how much faster the problems will be accelerating, and how little time we have to deal with the problem. They say that if we end up where we'll be at the end of the century um, without changing course, our grain yields could be half as bountiful as they are today, which means we could have 50% more people on the planet and half as much grain to give them on economics. If we, again, stay on the course that we're on by the end of the century, we'll have seen $600 trillion in damages from climate change, which is more than double all the wealth that exists in the world today. There's horrifying research on the relationship between climate and conflict, so that every half degree of warming, you see between 10 and 20% increase in conflict. Um, we're now at about one or 1.1 degrees of Celsius warming above the pre-industrial average. The UN projects that on the course we're on now, by the end of the century, at a little north of four degrees of warming. And at that point, there'll be parts of the world that could be hit with six climate-driven natural disasters at once. The UN believes we could be dealing with as many as one billion climate refugees. We've already left the world that we all grew up on. The planet is now hotter than at any point in all of human history. We are responsible for this climate that we are walking into, and just how bad it gets will always be up to us. Every tick upward of temperature makes all of these impacts, from agricultural yields to conflict to public health issues to sea level rise, makes each of those worse. And how far along the path to, say, 4.3 degrees we get will be determined by what we do. The future of humanity is literally in our hands, and by that I mean not just the people who will live on the planet over the next century, but literally the people who are taking action now, today. We are writing the climate future of the next decade now, and we are facing the possibility, although it's vanishingly thin, of human extinction at our own hands. And if we avoid that, which I hope and trust that we will, it will be entirely because we have made affirmative choices to avoid it. That story, in addition to being horrifying, distressing, and dispiriting, is also, I think, again, empowering in that it reminds us that we are completely in control of our own fate. And so as horrible as it sounds to contemplate these futures, they are only, at the moment, hypothetical. And whether we get them and make them real will be our doing. If we get there, we will have been responsible for that suffering. And if we avoid them, we will be responsible for that alternative outcome.